go. I can't believe my hands aren't shaking. Last time I did this, it was like, no, I'm trying to read. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the year was 2024, and Harry James Potter, the Minister of Magic, sat patiently in the kitchen of number 12 Grimold Place in London, a building formerly used as the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, but now reserved for those few times when Harry had to discuss matters so important even the very walls of the ministry itself weren't suitably sound. Harry, are you here? Harry recognised the voice at once. It was his longtime friend and closest confidant, Hermione Granger. It had been over a year since Harry had last seen his dear friend, and he could hardly contain the joy and relief her presence conjured within him. From the beaming smile on her face, it was clear that Hermione too felt the same. She approached Harry with outstretched arms and embraced him firmly. As they pulled away from each other, their eyes met, and for a second, the fire that each of them had been trying desperately to extinguish <laughs> over the past year <laughs> flooded their very being. Harry, you mustn't, whispered Hermione, just as a small stampede of footsteps could be heard pummeling down the hallway. I've missed you, Harry said. Then within seconds, the small kitchen of the House of Black was suddenly a hive of activity. Ron Weasley approached his wife and kissed her on the cheek with all the warmth of an Antarctic breeze. <laughs> there too was Lee Jordan, communications minister, Fleur Delacour of international relations, Arthur Weasley of mother relations, and Rubius Hagrid, whose knowledge of rare and magical creatures never went astray. Then just, just as all the warm introductions had nearly subsided, one final member of Harry's innermost circle entered the room. Potter. <laughs> Draco Malfoy, head of finance, sauntered past the fireplace. <laughs> Towards his old foe as the room fell silent. Malfoy, Harry spat, eyeing the thin and now graying Dra Draco keenly. What are you doing here? Wouldn't miss this opportunity to see you mess up another vital decision for us all, would I, Potter? <laughs> <laughs> the room was silent and the tension was palpable when suddenly. A wide grin split Draco's face and the two men embraced warmly. The room erupted with laughter and everybody took their seats. <laughs> but despite the jovial air of the whole occasion, deep down everyone was concerned. After all, there was no denying that something odd had been happening amongst the wizarding community of late. But, th but had things ex escalated to such an extent that Harry himself was afraid? The answer, unfortunately, was yes. You see, for a while, Harry had paid no heed to this new threat, dismissing it as one of the many lingering anxieties all too common in a generation recently ravaged by the torments and horrors of war. But lately, something had changed. The whisper of an echo, rumor, less tangible than gossip, but more terrifying than a children's nighttime story had encroached upon Harry's thick oaken desk. Its liquid ooze had stained, Harry felt, the very edges of his deep blue robes. It was palpable, and it had to be addressed. Friends, said Harry, thank you all so much for joining me today. I have two pressing issues we need to discuss. Firstly, and on a lesser scale, it has been brought to my attention that so far this fan fiction piece doesn't have any jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that too, said Ron. <laughs> 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 between them. Like the time when Harry and Hermione fucked behind Tesco in Sussex. <laughs> and they had, to, they had to wipe the memories of six muggle pensioners. <laughs> <laughs> or that other time when Hermione referred to her vagina as being the golden snatch. <laughs> Hermione, 
These shared memories weren't only explicit, but magical and therefore viewable by everyone in the room. <laughs> Including Ron, who sat there crying like a little bitch. <laughs> I would also mention what Jenny, Ginny's reaction was, but I've chosen not to write her into the story, a decision JK herself should also have made. <laughs> Ginny is as beige as Ron is flaccid. <laughs> if, even if, oh, 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 Ginny man. <laughs> even if Harry had hooked up with Lavender Brown, <laughs> a girl named after two shitty colours that should never go together, <laughs> the story would have been more compelling. <laughs> Issue number two, said Harry, clearing his throat. I'm sure you've all heard the news. There have now been seven confirmed incidents of fully grown wizards being able to control magic without the use of wands. I thought it was impossible to fully utilize magic without a wand, said Lee Jordan. Not necessarily, said Harry. For instance, I certainly had powers to a small extent before I even knew that Hogwarts existed. Yes, Harry, a lot of people do, interjected Hermione. But it's a known fact that these powers usually subside in order for true magic to take form. The legal and safety issues surrounding this would be huge. I mean, how can we possibly expect to protect the wizarding community, community if we cannot confiscate wands from dark wizards? Nobody said anything about these wizards being dark, said Lee. There was one alarming <laughs> incident. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. She's a racist <laughs> now. She's a racist <laughs> now. There's only five characters in there, and then I read it and went, oh, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> incident last week where a young man choked a colleague from across the table saying he found his lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> How many are there? We're not sure. But apparently they are identifiable by their robes. They've chosen for to forsake the traditional black and white, no sorry, the traditional black in favour of brown and white. And they've started mounting large wooden X's onto their brooms as if they have wings. <laughs> X wings. <laughs> I don't get it, said Ron from a corner. Who's <laughs> wanking over a piece of pumpkin pie? <laughs> Boy, this author really doesn't like Ron, noted Draco. <laughs> it's not that I don't like him, okay? It's just I don't think that he was used properly. And JK has actually admitted that she initially wanted Harry to end up with Hermione, but then she thought she felt compelled to let the underdog win. And I'm like, excuse me, he spent 11 years in a cupboard and his parents were dead, okay? <laughs> that is not the underdog. Who is an underdog? I don't, anyway. <laughs> Hermione stood and began arranging numbers onto a board, whilst Harry began reading out numbers of outbreaks uh, of these incidents. Harry said Hermione, their eyes meeting. The job would be a lot easier if you had any threes for me to put on the board, but there aren't any here. Ah, yes, I've been meaning to get new ones ordered, said Harry, given Hermione's sex eyes. But for now, he said, you're going to have to use the fours. <laughs> what, said Hermione? Use the fours, said Harry. Use the fours to the audible groans of the audience, <laughs> which is written on the page. <laughs> Ron and everybody killed him. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs>